The first person I told was my mother. She was shocked. Then she was saying, not in my house, not my daughter. My father used to tell me that those things are for whites. It's not for black people, it's a taboo. My father have a sister. The sister was married to a pastor. So they sent me to go and stay with my aunt. The pastor would be, you know, ah, praying every day. Them, they think maybe they are helping me, but they were confusing me the more. The pastor explained to me, you know, as a girl, you have to get married. I explained to him that, you know what, you're just wasting your time because I know what I want and I know how I feel. Then after that, what happened is, he was talking to my father on phone. It didn't come into my mind what they were planning. But the following day, I was sleeping. The pastor came to my room and you know, I don't know what happened, but he raped me. Yeah. I think they were thinking maybe they are trying to correct me. My father was always repeating that the pastor is trying to teach you a straightforward lifestyle for a woman. When you grow up, when you have your kids, you are going to go and say thank you to him. You won't even waste your time going to report it because there is no action. They don't consider it like you rape someone. And any police will just ask, what's, what's your case about? Ah, you are the ones who are causing problems in the country by doing those unnatural things. At least here, I will know that I'm safe. I won't be scared that maybe I'll be arrested. When I went to the interview, they responded to me after 30 days that, no, you can't be accepted as a refugee in Ireland. So since that time, I'm still waiting for the date of the appeal. It's not easy, but don't have a choice. The reason I got my refugee status is based on my gender, yes. Uh, it also based on where I come from. It is very difficult and hard for a transgender person living in a Muslim country. When my dad find out that I was different, he said that if you're gonna be a transgender, a lady boy, there'll be no future and no career, no family, you will end up alone. The only way to survive is to end up in the sex industry. And that will be a terrible thing. After moving to Dublin, life has changed for me. Whatever people say about Ireland is being old-fashioned and all, and I find people are actually very open-minded. I would like to show my family, especially my dad, that I don't have to end up in the sex industry. I can have a normal life just like he did.
I didn't want to leave Africa, but I had to. At that time in my life, it was very difficult living there. And I was afraid of uh, anything that could happen to me. I know of a number of people who've been arrested. Some even maybe ambushed in the hotels, some in their homes, some have been beaten to death. Because uh, culturally and uh, spiritually, and also according to the law of the country, is something which is uh, not condoned. Now, when I applied for asylum, they refused my refugee status. After that, I appealed. He also refused. So after I appealed, the only option was to apply to remain in the country. I'm living in a direct provision center. In the share accommodation, there's not much privacy. Like, I'm always afraid they might get to know about me. I'm afraid of being deported because uh, running away to come uh, live in a safe place is my main uh, reason for coming here. If it was not for belong to, I've been living a very depressed life.